Hi, this is Professor Evans. This video is for COP1000C. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through accessing your programming assignments through MindTap and how to submit them through MindTap. So when you log into Canvas, the first thing that you're going to want to do is look for a link to our MindTap course. And that's going to log you into MindTap and allow you to access the ebook as well as all of the homework assignments and unit tests. So if you go to the course materials module, the link to the online textbook and MindTap assignments is right below there. If it asks you for a course key, the course key will also be listed below the link. So you're going to click the link to get access to our MindTap course. If you haven't already created your Cengage account and entered your access code to get access to the course, you're going to want to do all of that before you start trying to learn how to do your MindTap coding assignments. More information on how to get access to MindTap as well as purchasing your Cengage Unlimited membership is provided within the orientation module. So you want to make sure that you review the required course material page as well as the how to set up and use MindTap page in order to learn how to get your account set up. So once you purchase Cengage Unlimited, you have your MindTap code and you log into your MindTap account, this is what you're going to see. Uh, when you log in, you'll see that there are several units that we're going to cover throughout the class. Within each unit are different activities. The read activity will allow you to read the textbook for that unit. Simply click on the unit and the word read and the ebook will open. You'll see a table of contents and then you can flip through the pages. Keep in mind that you have the ability to highlight, take notes. There are a ton of tools over here on the right hand menu that you may want to explore as you're learning how to read the textbook. But this is your textbook and each week you will be reading one of the units of the textbook in order to understand how to start learning uh, to program. So this is the read function. When you're done, you just click this little X right up here and you can go back to your MindTap screen. So that is the, the read. The visualize will give you videos of programming examples. So you'll want to watch these for some examples to go with what you read in the uh, reading section. The study section gives you a review with some PowerPoints and some interactive flashcards that you can use to review what you just learned in the unit. And then there is the apply section where you'll take your unit test. So unit one has these four sections. Now for every other unit, you'll see a fifth section called code. And that's where you're gonna find your programming assignments. So as you work through each unit, you'll start with the read section and read through the book for that unit. Look through the visualize for videos to help you understand what you're reading. And then you're gonna work on your coding uh, or your programming assignments. What you'll notice is that certain assignments are marked as practice and certain assignments say counts towards grade. Anything that says counts towards grade is a mandatory assignment that does go into your grade. That is going to be something you will want to complete by the due date listed on the screen. The practice ones are provided for you to get extra practice with your programming skills because remember, learning how to write code is just like learning how to play a musical instrument or learning a new sport. It takes practice, relentless practice, over and over and over to get better. So the practice assignments are there so that you can have extra practice if needed to prepare for an upcoming exam. Also, as a reminder, all of your midterm exams will be code based. You will have to write, debug, or analyze code on every exam. Therefore, you will want to make sure that you can independently write your own code on every exam, just like you have to do for these programming exercises. So let's talk about how to complete the programming exercise. When you're ready to start working on your code, you'll click the link and a new screen will open up. Click the Start Assignment Now button to load the assignment. It will take a minute to load. Once it loads, 
you'll see the instructions on the left and a sandbox will load where you can type your code right here and you also get a terminal. The terminal is where you can play around with your code to see what output it produces. The instructions tell you what your code has to do. In this case, write a program that produces the following output. So we have a number of asterisks here, we have a header, and at the bottom it says in your program, substitute question, question, question with your own name. If necessary, adjust the positions and the number of stars to produce a rectangle. So you're going to want to make sure as you type your code that you follow all of the instructions here because that is how you will be graded. So if you're ready to begin your code, you can come right over to your main.cpp program right here, and it's all set up for you to begin writing your code. Anything in gray with two slashes in front is called a comment. So you can take this first comment out, and then you can begin writing your code. The nice thing about the MindTap platform is that it pulls up the main program for you. It puts your pound include statement and your using namespace statement right at the top for you. These statements you're going to want to include in every program that you write because it allows you to have input and output in your program, such as printing words to the screen or taking in user input from the screen. So our program is set up and we can begin typing our code. So to begin this program, I'm going to go ahead and um, copy what I see over here to uh, produce the same output. So you'll see that there are actually 34 stars in the first line. So I'm going to go ahead and put 34 stars. There's my first line of stars or asterisks. The next line is going to say one asterisk, programming assignment, one. And I'm going to make a rectangle with my text. So I'm going to make sure that my first star and my last star of each line line up to make a rectangle. Notice that at the end of each line, I need to write this command ENDL, which stands for end line. Without this, everything that I'm going to display on the screen using a C out statement would all be on one line. If you haven't started reading through the unit yet or watching any of the introductory videos, you'll soon learn what a C out statement does and what an end line statement does. C out will print this line to the screen and end line will make sure that the next line that we want to print out begins on a new line on the screen. And then for my last line, I can copy and paste the first line right down there. When you're ready to see if your code works, you can hit the blue play button down here and you will get an output on the terminal. So I can drag this over, I can see the terminal, I can see my output and it makes a rectangle and it has all of the requirements listed in the instructions. If your program works the way that you think it should, the next thing you're gonna do is on this menu on the far left, go down to the tasks section. And you're going to hit the run checks button. The run checks button is basically going to grade your code and give you a score at the bottom. 
the score indicates what grade will go into the grade book if you submit this assignment right now as it is on the screen. So right now I have completed all the tasks with my code and if I were to submit this assignment, I would get 100% as my grade for this assignment. That, let's say that I did not do something correctly. For example, let's say that I forgot this line right here. I'm going to take it out. If I go back and run checks now, it should tell me that I do not pass all of the, ta the tasks. So I can see here that I did not get a check mark for these three tasks. I did not replace the question mark with the name. I don't have the correct keywords in the output, and I don't have the output structured to model the example provided in the instructions. So if you click the arrow, you can get a little bit more information about what it's looking for and how you're being graded. Now, if I were to submit this assignment at this point, I'd get a 25% on the assignment because it did not pass all of the checks. So you can easily see what your grade is going to be on each assignment that you submit by hitting the Run Checks button. So I'm going to go ahead and put that back in. Now let's say that I forget something important, like a semicolon. What you're going to learn in programming is that most of your code within the C++ language is going to end each line with a semicolon. And if you forget that, your code is not going to compile properly. So let's say that I accidentally forgot a semicolon. If I hit the Run Checks button again, I am going to get a 0%. And that's because this code doesn't compile, meaning I have an error that causes the code not to run at all. So if I were to submit this right now, I would get a zero for the assignment. So now it's up to me to figure out what the, what the error is and to fix it in order to get a better grade on this assignment. So I can put my semicolon back in, run my checks, and now it should go back up to 100%. So when you're done with your code and you're ready to submit, You'll hit that submit button and you'll hit confirm. And again, it will remind you of what your grade is going to be once you hit the confirm button. Now, you can always log into MindTap and write your code in here, or you can use your own compiler outside of MindTap to write your code. And I'll show you some differences with that. So if you look at our course and you go to the course materials, um, in the resources section, I've provided a link where you can download a very basic C++ compiler. Now, if you're used to programming and you use your own compiler already, that's great. But if you need an easy, simple compiler that's very quick and easy to download and learn how to use, you can download this C++ compiler. It's called Dev C++. This is what it looks like, and you can write your code in here instead. And if you're having problems debugging your code, a compiler like this will make it easier to figure out which line has the error. So let's say that I'm going to start a new file. So you're going to just go to File New. You get a file like uh, this, a blank screen. And I'm going to go back to my MindTap code. And I'm just going to copy and paste my code into this compiler and show you how it works. So same thing, same code. And now I can look at the menu here to compile. So compile means to check for errors, syntax errors. I can run, compile, and run. So what I'm going to do first is just hit this button to compile. That means I'm going to look for errors. I do have to save it first, so I'm going to save it as problem 2.1. Down here in the compile log, you'll get some information about the compilation. So error zero, warning zero. That means that my code should run. Let's say that I have an error that I missed. Let's say I forgot a semicolon there. And let's say that I spelled C out wrong. Now when I go to compile, I'm going to get a list of errors. Okay. The first line tells me where, which function the error is. This function is our main function. We only have one function. So we have two errors within our main function. The first one occurs on line 9, column 5. So if I double click this line down here, it'll take me to line 9. And it says error, expected, semicolon, before C out. That tells me that before this word C out occurs in the code, a semicolon was expected prior to that. Well, if I go to the line just before, I'm missing a semicolon right there. So sometimes when it tells you what line the error is on, you might want to look at the end of the line that comes right before it because sometimes your error might, might be right above. 
So I'm missing a semicolon right there. Now that I've fixed that, I'm going to re recompile. Now I can see that I went from two errors down to one error. So I did fix that first error. My next error is on line 10. It says caught was not declared in this scope, meaning it doesn't know what COT means. And at that point, I'd have to look at that and say, what was that supposed to be? Oh, it was supposed to be C out. So I'm going to correct that error and recompile. When I get zero error, zero warnings, I'm now ready to run my code. So to run the code, you can hit the run arrow or hit F10. You'll get a window that comes up and the output of your code will display right there on the window. So you can see that it is working right here. Now keep in mind, no matter how your code runs in your own compiler, at the end of the day, you will need to copy and paste your code into MindTap and submit it through MindTap. And it has to pass the checks in MindTap because that is how you are graded. So you may use your own compiler, you may write your code here, test it, make sure that it works, but ultimately, the grade that MindTap gives you is your grade for that particular assignment. So you wanna make sure that you run those checks and hit the submit button when you're done to make sure that your code is actually turned in. So do not forget to hit submit and then confirm to submit your code and to cement your grade. You can review your past submissions anytime. So keep in mind that your code is always saved within MindTap. So that's how you're gonna complete your programming exercise. When you're done, you'll simply close the window and move on to the next programming exercise which will have a different task and different instructions, but it'll open up with the same screen as before. So for example, here's programming exercise 2-3. Once you open it up, you can decide whether you're gonna write your code here in MindTap or go back to your C++ compiler. Again, just make sure that you read all of the instructions. So for example, You have a program segment, which is given to you right here. Write a C++ statement that includes the header file IO stream. So as you read through the directions, it'll tell you exactly what your code is supposed to do. Notice that you might have several pages of instructions, so make sure you click this blue button at the bottom to read all of the instructions. Make sure that you have followed all of those instructions before you go to the tasks to check your work. You can turn this menu off here if you just need space to work and look at your terminal. You turn it back on by clicking this button here. The insights just tells you how much time you've spent or attempts you've had on this particular assignment. And again, with the task is right here. We've talked about that. And this goes back to the instructions. So that is your introduction to how you're going to submit your programming assignments in MindTap. Be mindful, again, that the ones that count towards grade are required. And within each unit, you'll see that section that says code. And those are the assignments that you will complete for each section. Your unit tests are also here at the bottom for each unit. And it tells you exactly when it's due. So you will also come here and click on the um, unit test link in order to take your tests as well. So you can click that to start the assignment and then it will begin to give you questions for your unit test. So I'm not gonna start this now, but you get the idea of how you can start your unit test. So that's all for this video. Please email me if you have questions and until next time.